All right, good morning. And uh, this morning there's a text in Luke chapter 8, verse, uh, verses 40 through 48 that kind of stood out. That I, and I think there's some interesting, interesting ideas for us to consider this morning as uh, uh, Jesus heals a woman. And uh, again, it's Luke 8, 40 through 48. I know um, none of us really are are living lives that could be defined or, or that could be called business as usual. Nothing about life right now is 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 normal or or, uh, or usual. But if you're like me, there's this increasing. Um, movement back toward busyness <laughs> as usual that there um there was a brief time where the shelter in place orders and everything just put everything on pause but now things are starting to ramp up again and i'm, I'm realizing that even though uh, you know i can't go uh, about life you know business as usual the busyness as usual is is really starting to ramp back up so I think the, the verse verses we, we find in Luke 8, uh, 40 through 48 have some interesting thoughts for us. Um, and um, there's a, a quote from Frederick Buechner from this morning's devotional that I thought is just absolutely brilliant. So um, Luke 8, 40 through 48, this is one of my favorite passages in all of scripture. And, uh, and I'll talk a little bit why, but, um, so Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Just then there came a man named Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had only a, he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, who was dying. As he went, the crowds pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure, could cure her. She came up behind him. Jesus, and touched the fringe of his clothes, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Then Jesus asked, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and press in on you. But Jesus said, someone touched me, for I noticed the power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had immediately been healed. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. So there's, um, I, I do think this passage is filled with infinite depth and, and beauty and um, symbolism. And, and um, uh, there's a lot of things at play. And um, I, I think I, this morning I just wanted to focus on the sense of urgency that Jesus must have had and the sense of urgency that others surrounding Jesus must have had. You know, here we have Jairus, who is a leader of a synagogue and, and is a, a reputable, revered, honored, celebrated uh, member of the community. And he comes and he's saying, my little girl is, is, is dying. I need you to come and, and save her. And so um, we, we can't, I think there's there's danger in in just in reading a, a scripture passage like this and thinking that Jesus um, doesn't have a sense of urgency himself. Um, that we can read it and, and just assume that he's he's God. He knows everything that's going to happen, and he's um, and so there's no sense of of needing to hurry. Um, and even you know, and so I, I think Jesus probably had this sense of yeah, we need to go and. and save this girl and and even if he doesn't there's definitely a sense that everyone else had of uh you know we got to pick up the pace like there's something big that needs to happen here so there's a definite sense of, of urgency of, of needing to go quick and um and then there's this woman who uh you know if Jairus is the celebrated member of, of the of the community this woman who had been suffering for 12 years uh, was on the total opposite end of that. Uh, she was uh, a social. She would she would have been uh, deemed unclean, uh, a social outcast, 
um, people would have avoided her because of her her um, condition, and um, and then here we have this this you know the, the sort of um, contrasting imagery of Jesus going forward on this noble mission to save the the daughter of this celebrated member of of society, and here comes this this social pariah. And um, what does she do? She stops the whole procession. And she probably has to bump through a bunch of people to get to Jesus. She touches Jesus. And, and then um, by touching Jesus, you know, according to their, the customs and all, like she rendered Jesus unclean. And so she's kind of like putting the whole, um, she's putting the whole mission in jeopardy. And, and the, the sense of urgency is, um, immediately like heightened when Jesus stops and then he, he stops the whole crowd. He says, who touched me? And, um, and then she realizes she can't, she can't hide. And she goes and she, and she confesses, she says it was me. So I think, um, there's a lot of, a lot of beauty in, in, in the, um, and a lot of, a love, I think, really, in looking at a passage where um, where Jesus stops everything in the midst of that sense of urgency, and he stops, and he first acknowledges this woman, but then, of course, what does he he, he do? He doesn't just acknowledge her, um, but first, he you know, he healed her, um, and then he stops and he acknowledges her, and then he celebrates her. He says, "Your your faith has made you well." But more than that. He, um, as he is going to save the daughter of Jairus, he stops and he calls this woman daughter. Um, and so this quote from Frederick Buechner, I think, is a really good one for us, um, considering how powerful that moment must have been for this woman, for those in their, in, in their midst as well. Um, so Frederick Buechner writes, who knows how the awareness of God's love first hits people? Every person has his own tale to tell, including the person who would not believe in God if you paid him. Some moment happens in your life that makes you say yes, right up to the roots of your hair. That makes it worth having been born just to have happen. Laughing with somebody till the tears run down your cheeks, waking up to the first snow, being in bed with somebody you love, whether you thank God for such a moment or you thank your lucky stars, it's a moment that is trying to open up your whole life. If you try to turn your back on such a moment and hurry along to business as usual, it may lose you the whole ball game. If you throw your arms around such a moment and hug it like crazy, it may save your soul. How about the person you know who as far as you can tell as far as you can possibly tell, has never had such a moment. Maybe for that person, the moment that has to happen is you. So today, if you find yourself drifting toward busyness as usual, a sense of urgency is moving you down the path of life. Um, perhaps today, slowing down to pay attention to those moments is what you need. And so today, may you slow down and pay attention for those moments. Uh, and, and if you are here today and this morning, if, if you have experienced the moment from Jesus that, that makes you say yes right up to the roots of your hair, um, then today and in the days to come, may you be that moment for someone else today. Amen. <laughs>